Okay, so now that we've got our hood replaced, we're gonna do the same thing with the trunk. This one unfortunately got crinkled during storage and, and transportation of the car. So I picked up another one from the scrapyard that's exactly the same, uh, same color, same emblems. So all we have to do with this one really is swap over the lock from mine so that it'll match with the key and uh, feed the wiring through. This bundle of wiring for the license plate lights and the lock mechanism. And I might try and put this emergency release handle on if this one does not have that for some reason. It must be a different year. So if I can, I'll swap that over as well, but not a big deal. So we'll start by getting the original one taken apart and see if we can get the wire out of it and get it off and go from there. You're getting the cover off is actually quite easy aside from the release handle if yours have, has it. The, the most difficult part is finding the screws. They did a really good job of disguising them with a carpet layer. So you have to be careful that you get them all, first of all, before you try to pull the, I don't know if you can see them, right, right there. Little Phillips screws, but they put a carpet layer over the top. So you wanna make sure you get them all, that's the first thing. But you also wanna make sure when you take your screwdriver that you get all the way in. If you get only part way in and there's some carpet behind it and you go to turn, you're just gonna twist the head out and you'll never get the screw in. So I'm gonna try and really carefully undo all of these. And I'll, I'll try and get a count actually here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it looks like you should be looking for 13 screws. If you don't have 13, then you probably missed one. So I'm going to try and get all of them out here without hurting the heads. You can see they, whoop, as I throw it away. <laughs> you can see they've got a fuzzy layer on the top. I'll give you those to hold so that we don't lose any. They did a very nice job of, of disguising how they hold these on on these ones. You want to try and hold it up as you're taking the last screw out, a couple screws out, because you don't want to deform it or end up uh, Increasing the cardboard on the inside. So I believe that should be all now. The only thing I don't know is what's holding the this one. Yes, I did. There you go. I didn't count my screws. So right away, if it's if it's not coming away easily, then check to see if you missed a screw. So now it should come off relatively easily. The little cup handle on this side actually hooks into the trunk so you're physically pulling on the metal, not on the cloth. So that part you gotta kinda slide away from you. As for the release mechanism here, it's very hard to see, but there is a cable release up in there, just the same as the door cards have, the little gold hook with a plastic keeper. So I'm wondering if I can get that with the screwdriver. Probably a more, uh, I'll say, professional way to do this, but it's basically whatever you can do to accomplish the task without damaging your equipment. So this then should, actually, I can almost get my hand in here now. This should pop out of here, and the little hook comes out of there. And we have our release mechanism. So we're gonna change all of these guts over so we should be able to just use this inner cover which will already have the cable for the release on the new trunk. It makes more sense to strip everything off and, and scrap it. Keep all the good parts for other parts, other cars. Oh my goodness. The biggest problem on these trunks is the trunk rotting underneath the license plate and around the lights. The only thing I can think is that it's water getting in through the, the latch and it goes right down to the bottom course and cools, which causes the bubbling along here as well. Take this off. I don't have this plate on here anymore and I will try and salvage the license plate lights. I think they look like they're in pretty decent shape. So. These back in here 
Yeah, we might have to use them on the new one. One thing I did notice on the new one is it doesn't have any of these. Of course, most of these are broken off, but it doesn't have any of these um, crimp rivets with the threads for the bolts. So we might have to do a bit of modification later on to get the license plate mounted. But for now, we'll carry on with the inside here. Rubber, the outer rubber part will pop off. Okay. And then it looks like we just put the bullet stuff on here, I guess, in case we need it. There's a really tiny internal hex in the center of that, looks like. So it's really see. hard to see with the camera, but you might be able to see that. Yeah, yours is uh, yours is in way further than this one is. So that, oh, look at that. There you go. So we'll see. I don't like I said, I've never taken these apart before, so we're just gonna go slowly. That looks like it's Maybe adjustment for the rubber. It's hard to tell. Let's see what happens if we take it out here. Ah, and that should let us. I hope it started to move and then it stopped. See if I can. Ah. So that's what it is. You can adjust the height with these ratchets in here and then you put that screw in and snug it up and that stops it from moving and you put your rubber back on as opposed to the front on the hood you just rotate the whole rubber so we'll take these out of here and keep them it's always good to keep parts that you know are good you never know when you might need them plastic lets go all the time especially with the age that it is so if you have any parts you can keep if you have space to store them it's always a good idea Especially when you're doing something like a trunk swap like this. You could end up breaking something trying to get it apart. That's why I'm doing the original one first. So that if I break something, I've got the other one to use. That should just be a hex, but I don't have. So we'll have to get something for that one later. Once the trunk is off. But for now, we can start getting the rest of the locking mechanism and the motors and stuff out. So. I guess first we should try and fish the wires out, which might require taking the license plate lights out actually because I think the plug goes inside. So let's do that. Pull this down here and see if we can get these screws undone without breaking them off. That's always a challenge. If it's not the screws breaking off in the rusty trunk, it's the plastic of the lens breaking up as you're trying to get it out without breaking it. So. careful with the screwdriver you should be able to you don't do it in one place or you will break the plastic very carefully of course you can't see with my hand in the way very carefully break the seal loose because they do have a water seal on them and then if you hold your mouth the right way and rotate it you can get it out to get the wires so we'll get this one out as well and then I'll take the wires off really gentle especially this one even as new as it was it's still got rot happening and they do have a seal on them as well as a bunch of dirt by the look of things but if you tip it away from you out then there's two little tabs on the on the plug that you just squeeze and the plug should if it's working properly slide out so these ones were working but the bulbs do have some discoloration on them so it's also a good idea if you have available to you to put some new bulbs in when you have these out just because the more times you have to disturb the screws the less chance of them tightening up and staying so that's those done so now from the back side it should be relatively easy you're not going to be able to see this but if you put your hand up through the side you should be able to feel the wire and you pull it down that's the plug we just undid so that one can start to be fed out it may or may not be able to come all the way out before we remove the, the, um, the motor mechanism, but I'll try and see here how much I can get. It's come to a stop already, but... but yeah. So 
that's our right hand license plate light. I'll see if I can do the same for the left, wherever that is. Looks like the same thing. You feed your hand around the left side. This one's much easier. It's already part of the buckle. And so, it's always nice if you can get these clips out without breaking them. They're what actually hold stuff together and keep it from vibrating. So, I do actually have some body tools that I meant to bring up here with us, but if you take a screwdriver and you go gently behind, do a little bit of a pry sideways and pull gently. This one's got a lot of tension on it because of the wires that are on it, but there are actually some little tabs if you can, if you can get in there to see them. That little tab was actually supposed to get pushed in, so if you can avoid breaking them, and you're able to put it back in the way it was originally, then that's bonus for you kind of thing. Actually, in this case, it looks like a smaller screwdriver is better. I don't know if you can see, but if you just push in, it actually looks like these are just one-sided, so if you push in in the right place, it comes right out perfectly. The problem, of course, is finding out which side that tab is on. This one looks like, of course, it's the opposite side to what I can reach. Get your hand in there. There we go. The more you can take out intact, the better. This one, I'm not even sure. Looks like it's a little. Those little single time, of course, because they don't ever want you to take this apart. It's one of those push in accordion clamps. Which, because I don't care about this trunk, I'm willing to bend this oops, bend this tab up a little bit so that I can see behind. Because, again, they don't want you to take this apart. But if you can carefully, of course it's not going to cooperate with me. If you can carefully take it out, then that's great. But. thing you can always do if you, if you aren't successful in trying to get the clip out is you can just tie wrap it in place afterwards. There we go. Holy smokes. Yeah, those things are dumb. And it really can't be used again. It's well, I mean, you could probably put it in, but the chances of it staying, we might try it actually just because it's already there. If you put it in and it just pops back out, no problem, put it in and put a tie wrap around it. So we can unplug, actually this will pop out of its little holder, I think. Okay. That is the wire for the lock mechanism itself. It pops out of there as well. And on these type of plugs, the way it's supposed to work, this one's all clean and, and new. So you should be able to just, you pull back on this little catch which releases the, the, the catch inside, and then you should be able to just... All the plugs on these Volkswagens are this style. Of course, the ones that are in the engine area and the ones that are exposed to the road, especially for the ABS sensors, this catch never works. So what you have to do is you stick a little screwdriver in under here to release the catch before you can take it apart. I'll take the little plug out of the... I think this is the, the lock motor here, which actually activates the not only the locking when you arm the car but the um the releasing of the trunk by both the button on the door panel and the button on the remote so we got another one of these lovely plugs here you got to be careful i was pushing on this you don't want to bend these arms this is the linkage for the actual mechanism for the lock so you don't want to bend those So there is a plug on the latch here. I can't tell what kind of a keeper it is. It looks like there's a little tab on this side that if you get a little screwdriver and pull it up. The only thing I can't see is if there's one on the other side as well, which would be really dumb since you can't get to it. But 
uh, there is definitely one on that side which is released, but it still won't move. So there must be one on this side too, which you literally cannot, you literally cannot get to it. Like, why would they make something that you can't access? There we go. So there is. There's a freaking a stupid little tab on both sides that you have to pry out to get it off. And that one's actually starting to show some oxidation. So what we're going to do when we put all this back together is put dielectric grease in all of the plugs. So what I had to do with that one is you actually have to go in behind the lock like that and try and catch this part here to give it a little pry to get the plug out. So the only thing left for the wiring looks like this little clip here for the other side of the license plate lights. And that gets us out of there and then the, the next biggest challenge is to feed this whole bundle through there just like we had to do on the hood. There's a few more plugs on this one obviously. So maybe let's do that right now. We'll focus on, on getting the wiring out. One of the big problems with the jet is here is the this bundle of wire breaking and then you lose either your license plate lights or you lose control of the trunk latch and you can't open it unless your key actually still works which a lot of them don't. This one looks like it's in really good shape. The the rubber insulation is all in, in one piece still, it's not broken, but there is still a good chance that the wires inside could be broken or almost broken. So I'm not going to do anything with it right now just because everything still works. But uh, if you get into the position where your license plate lights stop working and you can't figure out what's causing it or um, you lose the control of the trunk, then it's probably this bundle of wire. So when you go to take this out, you just push the arm down a little bit, rotate this little lead piece sideways. It might not actually be lead, but that's what it looks like. And there's a little tiny bar that slides through the slot and then it rotates to hold. So you pull that out. Um, we don't need to take this off because this, this light colored piece will all come out of the trunk. The only other part we need to undo somehow is this, this little plastic link here, which I'm guessing will just pop off of a post similar to the gas struts. It could have a release, so it's, it's always good to be cautious and see how it comes apart before you try and do that. It looks to me like it should have little, there we go, little, oh, that's not doing necessarily what I want to though. It looks like these little, uh, there's two little plastic hinge latches on both sides and there's threads on this so to me it looks like that's supposed to hold that together so I'm not going to touch that. I'm guessing this should pop off of here. How difficult that might be I have no idea. Not too bad. It's fairly pliable plastic. Now this is threaded so you don't want to you don't want to mess up the adjustment on that. We're going to put this whole mechanism into the other trunk which could result in the alignment being different because no two trunks are exactly the same but we'll start with it where it was. So if you can avoid adjusting that when you're trying to get it out, that's great. What we can do actually to save ourselves some grief here, it looks like, is we can go, I don't know how that's supposed to move, but if we can get it to go sideways enough, we can pop that out of there. So there's notches in this plastic part for the two arms and holes on the top side. So you gotta line it up with the slot to put it in and then you pop it over the top and that's what keeps it in there. So we'll take that out just so that we don't bend it. We'll put it uh, on the table here. So uh, we should do the same thing with this. The same. There's another arm of the same style on the on the actual latch itself, or on the on the key lock rather. Which you need to get pretty much on the back side, which I can't do because the trunk's in the way. But you want to get the back and try and gently pry it off here. That's not the kind of prying I was hoping for. So unfortunately it looks like that just broke the arm off of that which was not what was supposed to happen. These locks are very much able to be disassembled so hopefully what we'll be able to do is replace that part off with the other, the other uh, lock mechanism. So for future reference and for the viewers very gentle with this. It's obviously a weak point on the design. This little tiny arm here is only held on by a, 
a little tiny shaft through there. So in this case, it might be better to, it might be better to approach these little clips just so you don't risk breaking that. Otherwise, you need to make sure you have it supported for sure. So I'm gonna squeeze this one past here, hopefully too. Come on, there you go. So yeah, you see that's the only part holding this whole arm on here, a little tiny. And it's only cast aluminum, so it has basically no strength. That's also why when the lock mechanisms start to seize up, often it'll just break things because if it can't move, the, um, the force that the motor can apply is likely more than the metal can handle. So everything should be free of the lock, the lock mechanism and the latch. So we've got one, two, three, 10 millimeter nuts. So, the lock, or the latch rather, should be just two more 10 millimeter nuts. I don't think there's anything else connected to that, so we'll do that first. for the sake of not causing any more problems because I've only ever had bad issues when you mix up parts from one car and another car. So it wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't uh, so much electrical based, but because these ones are, so there's the latch and the little plug that will put the light on your, on your dash if the trunk isn't uh, latched fully. And it also will set the alarm off if the trunk is um, open while the car is armed. So the only real thing we have left to do on this original trunk lid, aside from get all the little clips off afterwards, is we have to get the lock out. So for this, I don't know if the camera can show you, but there are three Torx head screws around the back, and that should be all that's holding it in there. I say should because it's Volkswagen. So we will try and see if we can get those three to undo nicely for us. And they should be, they should be T25, question mark? Yes, T25 for the viewers. If I need to get an extension for this, I will. other mounting. I'm not sure what that is. Let's see if it'll move for us here. There we go. Just like that. Mm. Yeah. So what I'm hoping is that this looks like this outer plastic part can probably be swapped. That's where the little arm broke off and that shouldn't impact the actual tumblers for the proper key. So when we get the other one apart, we'll just do a little comparison and if we can swap that over, then we'll be all set. Otherwise, we're looking at rekeying um, the other tumbler, I guess, which I don't believe you can do without the key and I don't have the key for that, unfortunately. So we'll see how that turns out. But now we can get the trunk lid off. So uh, our wiring is clear. We can take the struts off, I guess, here anytime. Same thing as with the hood for these ones. All you want to do is pop it out part way. It doesn't need to come, it shouldn't need to come, I should say. It shouldn't need to come all the way out, but this one's being un uncooperative, so in this case, I might just take it off, or if you can get it to sit there. Problem is, if it does go boing and shoots it across the room, then uh, you have to find another. I'm just gonna take this one off for safety. And of course, since we aren't in a garage, you'll likely never find it again. Yeah. We will not find it again if we lose it, so I'm going to take it off in this one too. These struts look like they're in really rough shape, but they actually still work quite well. I will probably have to replace them eventually, but for now they're working quite well. I might try and clean up the rust later on, but for now, I get eaten by mosquitoes. Okay. Yep. 
So this is another important part, just for aesthetics. If you don't care about how it looks, you don't care. But these uh, these little, actually you can just do it with fingers, but these just cover the nuts. Not only is it uh, an aesthetic thing, but it also protects the threads and, and the nut from corrosion and from dirt. So it's a good idea to put them all back on if you have all of them to begin with. When I took the new trunk lid out of the wrecking yard, I collected all these. So that those should be 13 millimeter as well, which we had from before for doing the hood. You can actually see this one still has a gob of paint on it, which indicates that it is actually the original trunk lid, it looks like. Which was not what I was told, but people sometimes get their facts mixed up. So again, same thing, I'll take the bottom nuts completely off. Okay. So, you can probably, if you want, you can, you can just hold with one hand and I'll come on and do the nut. Does that work? Okay. So, I'm going to try and support this. Please one want to do with fingers. Throwing the nut away. Okay, so there you have it. The old trunk is stripped and off. We're not gonna show you the same thing on the new one. We have to do the same thing. We have to strip all the interior and everything out of it. Thank you.